Hi hey YouTube, welcome back to our channel. I'm Elena. And I'm Franklin. So today's video is a little bit different from what you're probably used to. So today we're at the Delta Flight Museum and we're standing in front of the most iconic plane I think ever in history. This is ship number 6301. This is the very first Boeing 747 ever to be made. Also known as the queen of the sky. As my queen said, it is also known as the queen of the sky. <laughs> so today we're gonna to give you a walk around of the museum and also go inside and look inside of this huge, massive plane. So continue to watch as we uh, go in and Barry, hit that B-roll. Thank you. I'm about to take you to your first class seating. Thank you. Miss Elena, oh, this lovely. is the best seat in the house, seat 1A. Lovely. So Elena is sitting in seat 1A which is known as the best seat of the house because one, you have unlimited leg room, which she really can't use up anyway. <laughs> and two, you sit in front of the cabin, which the cabin crew is somewhere right around here. So you're sitting in front of the cabin. And this is the Delta One <laughs> section. Okay, so first class, you have cushion seat belts. Like I said, I'm six feet tall and yeah, I can't even touch the front. You have your in-flight entertainment. You have a little tray table that comes up and out. Close that down and you have a view. You have your TV controls. You got the controls for your seat. Well, yeah, this is... Um, First class on 747. Okay, so this is showing you what the 747 looks like without seats. So here is with seats, how it is when you're flying. And this is to show you the innards of the airplane. You can see all the flight controls and wires, air vents. This is how big it is. This is more air vents. I believe this is where the center fuel tank is at. So down there is the cargo hold. That's the cargo door. This is where your luggage goes, which I will show you outside in a few minutes on what they put the what they put your luggage in. Okay, so this is where the flight attendants relax when they're not serving you. It's very cramped in here. Um, I want to see if I can cut a light on. So yeah, that is the um, flight attendant's seat or bed where well, they can sleep too for international flights. Little jump seat over there. But yeah, this is where your flight attendants sleep on them long international 13, 14, 16 hour flights. So now we're heading to the second level of the 747. As you can see, they still have the seating that's in first class. We're just on the second floor now. Heading toward the uh, cockpit. <laughs> so this is where the captains rest. 
this is the cockpit. Excuse me. Okay, like I said earlier about the cargo hold, I'm on the wrong side. Never do this on the ramp, this is very dangerous. Okay, like I said earlier about the cargo hold, so actually your luggage goes into these crates like this. They put them on a machine and they load it into the belly of the plane here and they push it back. So that's, that's how you load a 747. So many people don't get a chance to see this, but we're up under the belly of a 747. You can see how many landing gears are in the back. So with this, these back wheels, they steer. They help you know the plane turns. This tube right here is when the plane is on the ground, the maintenance hooks it up to the airplane and it's hooked up to like an air conditioner heater cart, as you can see over there, and it sends air conditioner heat into the cabin as the plane sits on the ground waiting for you to board. Okay, up next we have the DC-9. So this plane basically started the series of the MD-88, the MD-90, and eventually once Boeing took over, the 717. So like earlier, that is nicknamed the Queen of the Sky. This was nicknamed the Mad Dog. When Boeing took over or also built the 717, it was called the Mad Pup. Yep, that's the real name, Mad Pup. Hello, YouTube. We're at the Delta Air Museum. Behind me is ship number 608. Plane Boeing 757, also known as the Pencil. Now we're about to walk into the hangar. So this is really close to the airport, as in the runway is literally right there. The main terminal's there, international terminal's over there, and all the gates in between are right, right along here. If you listen, you probably hear a uh, plane taking off or landing. And there's the uh, tower right here. Another fun fact, I think that is the third highest tower in the world. If you know how tall it actually is, comment down below. So here on the outside, we have a DC-7. This one flew in here maybe about two or three years ago, and it was fully restored. I believe it's one of the best fully restored DC-7, I think, out now. So we have a demonstration of a prop engine. So as you can see, as the cylinders turn, it turns the uh, prop. So this demonstration, and this is a actual engine. Okay, so they also have a cool little demonstrating um, thing to show you what it's like to actually fly a plane with the yaw, pitch, and roll, but unfortunately it's in progress don't know what that means but yeah it's in progress okay fun fact so delta actually started off as a crop dusting company and then later on it turned into a airline and they start flying planes like this and this 
so this is a McDonnell Douglas DC-3. This is the third one that Delta bought. I believe this one uh, usually ran from Atlanta to Texas. So it's a little star cart and the fire extinguisher. So believe it or not, they still use fire extinguishers like this at the gate at the Atlanta airport. So in the mid 70s, maybe late 70s, uh, the airline industry was really going through a struggle and you know, it wasn't looking too good. So three flight attendants from Delta came together and had the idea to buy a airplane for the airline. So how many companies do you know that the employees would buy things for the company? I mean, most people wouldn't even buy a coffee maker for their company, but these people bought a whole airplane and not only a normal airplane, they bought the top of the line, newest model airplane ever. So after a few years, they raised enough money, which was $30 million to buy a Delta Airline airplane. And this is the airplane right here. And this is the Spirit of Delta. In 1983, they presented this airplane to the airlines at the cost of $30 million. I don't know what that is in today's money with inflation and everything, but even today's money is still pretty expensive. So this plane was repainted in 1996 because uh, Delta was the official airline for the Olympics and it had an Olympic you know, livery for it. And then later on, they painted it in the 75 year anniversary color. And now they repainted it back to the original livery, which it was presented to Delta in 1983. So this shows how much Delta employees love the company and how the company treats their employees. So now we're about to uh, take a closer look at it. This is, I believe, an L-1011 uh, replica. Could be a real one. It is only open for special events. It's like a meeting room on the inside. So now we're about to walk onto the Spirit of Delta. This is the uh, controls for your drawbridge. So now we're about to uh, in the Spirit of Delta. Here's our beautiful flight Your attendant. Seat is down there. Down there. Okay, thank you. Because you're not the pilot. Well, dang. <laughs> okay. I believe this is first class. First class. Yeah, I don't know what class this is. More poverty curtains, as you can see. So on the inside, they kind of turned it into a museum of Delta from the past and to the future. Wow, it is kind of 70s, wow. don't like the match patterns. When we get to the back, we have jump seats and the gallery, the galley. You see in the back? Nice bottles of alcohol, and you get a big old can of Coca Cola, which they do not serve anymore. Yeah, you get the, the little cup. Well, they even got glasses. They even have a menu in cursive. That, you know, unfortunately, many people cannot read in cursive anymore because yeah. they don't teach it in school. Hmm. Bring back cursive. <laughs> Save the cursive. Save the cursive. Save the cursive. My grandmother probably had this cursive. You got the old school luggage. Look at this one. You, can, you have more luggage space. Yeah, like perpendicular. I like the little hats. Bring back the hats. Have a nice cutaway of the 747.
So like I said earlier, in 1996, Delta was the official airline for the Olympics. And the Spirit of Delta was painted in this livery. And then a few years later, it was painted in this livery for the 75 year anniversary. And then reverted back to what it is now. And this is what it looked like when they presented the plane to Delta back in the 80s. Now, reach under your seat to put on your little wooden device. Okay. In case of a water landing. And then you're going to blow in the tube to inflate. All right. If a rough landing, just make sure your seatbelt is buckled. You get to, how do you buckle your seatbelt? This is how you buckle your seatbelt. The shimmer here, buckle into here. You can tighten it if you are a little heavier, <laughs> loosen it. <laughs> but if you're a baby, you need a car seat you need, or you need to sit on your parents' lap. And here, you have the wings in the back, exits over the wings, water landing, you slide down that slide under the wing. Okay, so this is the cockpit of a 767 Spirit of Delta. I believe this one has flown almost 60 million miles too in this um, lifetime. So if you really love flying and you have the budget to do it, they have a real life 737 flight simulator. I think it's one of the only ones that's open to the public, but it does cost about $495 for about 40 one to 43 minutes of actual flight time. As you can see here, flight simulators just came a long way from something like this, it looks like a little child's toy in front of the grocery store. Then they upgrade to something like this, to basically this technology genius. Okay, so that concludes the tour of the Delta Flight Museum. For more videos like this, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.